Hi everyone. Hello, welcome back. Yeah, here we go again. Uh, this is our six, five workshop, fifth workshop, right? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And we are already at the middle of our this workshop series, so yeah. <laughs> time goes very fast. <laughs> very fast. Now new home. Uh, I'm here in North Dakota State University in Fargo, as yeah. you see. Uh, I'm adapting <laughs> to the north, and uh, I really have a great time here. Uh, uh, we can talk about that later. Yeah, so welcome back, Felipe. We miss you in the last two workshops. Also. Oh. <laughs> Good. Uh, and so, as usual, we we have to start the workshop by presenting who we are uh, and, and what we do and how you guys can follow us. Uh, so we are Finon Force. We started this platform uh, one year ago, and we are here to. Uh, we are a community of people working on phenomics, uh, and that we that wants to collaborate and interchange resources. So our major aim is to provide resources for people that are starting or they are already experts in the field. And how we do that, we want to provide free training. Um, and we also try to connect people using different platforms. Uh, and in particular, we are very interested in empowering early career researcher. So we are, uh, next slides. Uh, so how you can follow us, you can visit our website where we, in general, that we keep updating uh, with information and what we do. You can follow us on Twitter, uh, or you can watch our um, um, our workshop on our YouTube channel. Uh, and also you can send us email. So you can write at phenomforce at gmail.com. Uh, in particular, you can write us there if you want to join us on Slack. We have a Slack workplace that now it started to get more active a little bit with people posting questions and asking for help. And so we are very happy of that. So what is, if you are not very familiar with Slack, it's an app that allows people to connect and to talk. Uh, so there are many channels and we created channels based on the topic on phenomics. Uh, so you can join any of the channel that we created, uh, but we ask you to introduce yourself when you join. Uh, and but also you can post any suggestion related with the workshop or any other events that you you think it's important and we will try to accommodate your request. Uh, so as I said before, we provide, uh, we have been doing workshop the last key season. We uh, did an amazing workshop series about data analysis and open source tool for doing that, which we think it's the most challenging part in phenomics. Um, and uh, so you can see you can go back and rewatch uh, all of this workshop in, on our YouTube channel. And we uh, suggest you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep updated on our events. Uh, and so since we had a great success, we also started a new workshop series that um, we are currently doing, right, Philippe? Yeah, great. Yeah, Anna. Uh, so first of all, guys, don't forget to sign up in the YouTube. Every time that you're going live, you're going to receive a message and then you can keep following exactly what you're doing. Uh, this year, we have this opportunity to present another series of workshops called Setting Up Low-Cost Phenotyping Platforms. Talking about uh, low-cost phenotyping platforms, uh, there are many interpretations about that. You can build your own platform, you can get data online. So we are trying to abort and talk about all these possibilities, all right? And uh, our, this workshop series start last April 9th, yes? And we are in the fifth workshop and we have another four workshops uh, for the next four Fridays. So keep following and watching the uh, these amazing guys that's coming uh, to help us and sharing their knowledge here. Uh, the workshop today, uh, these speakers, they provide uh, many different links on uh, GitHub and Docker. They're going to explain better how you use that information. So 
Uh, if you sign up for this workshop series, you will receive an email with all this information. Also here on the video description, you can get uh, the same links too. And the speaker is gonna explain better how, uh, how to use each one of those. With this, uh, I'm happy to uh, invite uh, Sushin Wesley, Wes, from uh, uh, University of Georgia. Today they're gonna talk about open tools for low cost 3D root phenotyping. People from root phenotyping, they are really fancy. <laughs> they always come with uh, nice stuff to show us and for sharing. So welcome guys. Okay. Hello, Hello everyone and thanks for Philip and our Anarita for introduction. We are so happy to have this opportunity to join this workshop and show some of our work. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Please. Oh yes, we want also to say that uh, before you guys start that if you have any questions, you are free to post them on YouTube and then we will stop the speakers to answer your question. And with that, I think we, we leave you guys leading the workshop and we wish you good luck. Yeah, okay. so we're gonna be right here. If you guys need anything, just let Anahit and I know. And also, as everyone know, you're using internet and you know many devices. And if someone lost, someone someone of us here lost the connection, stay there. We're gonna be right back. All right. Awesome. Okay. Uh, you can see my screen now. It's a slice. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, today, my uh, whole demo and workshop we are related with the open tools for low cost 3D film typing. We are from University of Georgia, and my PL was Alexander Bush. He called himself Professor X, and I'm Sushin Liu, a postdoc in the lab, and Weiss was an excellent PhD student in our lab. And today, I have some three parts to present and communicate with others. And the first part, we are going to introduce the DIRT 3D system and extension, which can be used for portable device and other kind of rules like beam rules. The second part, we are going to show some demo and handout of DIRT 3D system. This includes three parts. The first part was the building Raspberry Pi for root scanner to get all the root images Second was the, uh, we are going to show how to use the container, Docker container to run our software only using one line. That's the 3D model reconstruction and measurement. Se third one we are going to uh, introduce, we also can use Raspberry Pi to do the plant image uh, processing like smart plant growth and how to do that. The third one I'm going to Hand it to Wes, and he will introduce our plant, uh, plant IT platform, which will integrate all our modules into one web form. So we call that browser automation for phenotyping software. Okay. First, we are going to explain why we won't uh, study the rules or root phenotyping. It is estimated that humans are responsible for release like 880 billion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere. As we all know, besides the pandemic, this extra CO2 has caused serious consequences like ocean acidification and extreme weather and global warming. And the big question in here is how can we reduce this extra CO2 in the atmosphere? Before I joined the plant science department, as a computer science, the question, the answer for me was only let's dress, let's uh, drive cars, let's use bicycle. But after I joined the plant science department, I learned the answers is just under our feet. It is in the form of plant roots. Plants, as we seen here, using the sunlight and the water, naturally perform photosynthesis. They pull CO2 from the air and turn into carbon dehydrate, sugars, and then they pump some of these sugars down through the roots that feed the microorganism who use that carbon to build healthy soil. 
in this process, the carb the CO2 was pulled from air into the soil. Can you imagine if we use the massive crop land, since we have a lot of crop land in the US, as we can use this plant root as a natural carbon sink, how much CO2 can be pulled back into the soil? Here we have some data showing that in 2017, only 91 million acres of corn in the US has helped reduce 850 million megatons of CO2. That is amazing. So the question now become, can we help breeder to select best models or gene, genes or genotypes of crops to improve carbon sequestration process through root phenotyping? That is the goal and that is the, why we are studying the root. But it is very challenging. Root was so complex and in here you can see that it's all heavily occluded and it's deep uh, under the uh, dirt. So how are we going to do the root phenotyping? In here, we build our dirt 3D system. It is with using shovel pneumatics method to dig out the roots using robot in the field. And we build our root 3D scanner in here. Later, I will introduce you how to use the Raspberry Pi to build the scanner. And we capture all the images in here and using the root scanner, then we upload all the images online, like servers, data uh, storage. Then we have automa automatic ca calculation of the 3D root models. And we can also extract the root traits. Now we can, Dirt 3D can extract 18 root traits out of the, the 3D models. The basic and very important traits was like the wall distance, and breeze root angle and many uh, root breeze root lens, which are very difficult to measure only using 2D images. Okay, here I'm going to show you the scanner, root scanner we built. It's a prototype and we are using 10 cameras and with our Raspberry Pi cluster. And in the center, it's a root uh, attached into the stand with the scanner rotating, we will capture many uh, image, images from different view angles of the route. Later, I'm going to show you the, uh, how the scanner runs. Here, the main components of this part was the uh, Raspberry Pi cluster. As we introduced before the workshop, many workshops mentioned how to use the Raspberry Pi, but here we are going to use 10 Raspberry Pi Pis to control 10, Raspberry, uh, 10 cameras. And we are going to build the Pi controller, which will be the master of the other uh, Raspberry Pis. And we are go going to control the style motor, control the movement of the 3D scanner. And also uh, we connect each uh, Raspberry Pi using Wi-Fi network and TP uh, link switch to increase the speed. After we have some captured images from the 3D roof scanner, we are able to build the 3D models from these images. And this process was called 3D reconstruction. And we have improved our 3D reconstruction pipeline and we're using some technique called multimodal geometric verification that will calculate which of the images match so well. And second, we are going to use, uh, if we have the matched wheels, how we go going to choose the second wheel in reconstruction steps. And also in here, we introduce a reconstruction filter to select how many number, uh, what's the number of images are we going to use to build the best model. Here is a simple example of showing that this uh, uh, 3D root model was built from the images we captured. On the left side, you will see this is a root, real root in here, and it's very highly occluded and it has many fine roots. And in here, our 3D models was able to successfully reconstruct all the details. And you can see that in here. 
And with the uh, 3D model build, we are also able to extract the root trees from these uh, root models. This is, uh, for example, this is the root model we built, and this is the individual root tracking. We are using algorithms like Carter filter, common filter, and Hungary algorithm to track individual roots, like in here. And with in here, we we only show the structure of the roots, and we with the structure information with tracking, we can extract all the details like the angle of the roots, the diameters, and the different wall locations in here. You can see that we are able to detect clearly where the location and what's the emerging route coming from. This is very difficult before and it's very challenging. But with our root structure uh, compute, uh, compute result, we see some disconnection part like showing here, uh, for the, for example, number five and number fourteen, they should be connected because there are some parts missing. This is due to the resolution of the images and the resolution of three D models. So we are building the three D models only using the point cloud. So we are missing some points due to occlusion and insufficient image resolution. So we develop some algorithm to connect them and using the backtracking and trace connection method. Here we can see this is improved and refined root structure. Now we go to the real roots. We got a test panel for 100 roots. They are all coming from the field and we build the real uh, images, or capture all the real images and build the real root models. Here is the computer root structure model. You can see that it is very complex. And in order to compare the structure with the real root model, we overlay them, let you see the structure. Here, some refined root structure using our uh, by tracking method. You can see that some part was connected. It is better represent the root structure. We have the test panel, about 100 rules, but we have 12 different genome types. They cover the many extreme situations, like very wide, very big, very slim, and very deep rules. And we are all able to show, build all the models and extract the root structure from them. I'm going to show you some uh, result in here. We can see that the root structure they are very complex, but our third 3D algorithm was able to build the models and extract the root structure. With the computed root trees and uh, geometry information extracted, we are also able to analyze all the trees. That's the important part for help the breeder select best genotype. For example, we here we computed the broad sense hazardities of all the 18 computed root trees. We can see that some part with root lens was not so related. It is a very interesting finding. In the gen genotype differentiation part, we are able to tell from our computed trees, these 18 trees was important and they are able to help the breeders, help the plant scientists to distinguish different genotypes. As for example, in here, this uh, genotype PA762 was distinguished different from this PHG50, X, PHG47. So that's the uh, very useful tools we have built. And that proof our 18 computer trees has this genotype distribution ability. With uh, all the traits computed, we are also able to compute the PCA analyze, and we can see that the 12 genotypes, they are clustering, was distinguished from each other. And this also shows that the principal components of the traits was able to reveal 
the computed 3D root trait strength. Here, moreover, we can still see that the correlation between different trees is going to show us the thin utility. This, for example, if we look at carefully, what's the uh, lateral root diameter and stem root diameters, their correlation was 0 0.65. That means they are related and in a positive way. And with all the dirt 3D system built, we think it might be able to extend the dirt 3D system to some smaller uh, platform. Since our scanner was very big in a room and it's used in a field, is that possible? We build smaller device like people can hold that and capture some smaller rules? Yes, we think so. And we are trying to using some image stitching algorithm because if the scanner was smaller, we are only to able to capture the smaller part of the route. For example, we have uh, do some tests using a uh, endoscope camera, very small one to capture only parts of the route. As you can see on the left side, it is all the parts cap images captured by the endoscope camera of the bin route. On the right side, you can see the the formula we showed the uh, it's the uh, it's a maze route. Here we got the very good result using image stitching algorithm. We can stitch all the images together and forming a very uh, clear whole image of the root. And here it is the result of the pin root. Here I'm going to show you the 3D models built from only uh, this kind of images with partly captured images. So it also shows that the dirt 3D system was able to be extended to smaller scale and with portable ability. In the next part, I'm going to show you that only uh, beside dirt 3D system, we are also able and we also built the Raspberry Pi uh, for the smart plant growth to use that, analyze plant images, especially the top view of the images. In here, this is our device. We mount the run one Raspberry Pi on the top of the tree inside the growth chamber, and we use this Raspberry Pi to monitor the growth of the plant uh, 24 hours. And the images were captured like this, and our we built some software and pipeline which are able to extract individual plants and calculate the basic geometric trees or like wise and the height of the plants and also especially and we are able to detect the number of the leaves and also uh, get the skeleton of the leaves this is for the low cost uh, plant phenotyping system and in here i'm going to show you the trees we are able to Mired from this pl smart plant growth pipeline. It is includes some basic uh, geometric trees and number of leaves. And also, uniquely, we are able to distinguish the color distribution on a leaf. That means we are able to tell what kind of color distribution on the leaves and how many colors, how many kind of greens on a leaf color. And also, we are able to identify individual leaf and count the number of leaves. And also we are able to ca capture the curvature of leaves, tell how curly this leaf when it grows. This part, I'm going to show you this. Uh, we are using the uh, dominant color clustering method to detect the leaf color distribution and also using a temperature sticker in here. We are able to compare the difference between colors uh, distribution on the leaf and tell what's the temperature, what temperature surface temperature of the leaves. That is very interesting. Here I'm going to show you some uh, rice 
test this image coming from the field and I got it from internet and we are able to detect individual uh, rice object and detect their uh, skeleton and also detect individual leaves and their basic geometric trace. And here, this is all the color distribution of the leaves. We are also able to tell how many percentage of different kind of green on the surface of the rice plant. Okay, and here, uh, next part will be wise part, but before that, I'm going to show you some live demo. Okay. Here is, um, if you can pull in here, it's our GitHub portal. It's called Computational Plant Science. And we have many software modules installed and in this portal. And this repository was called Raspberry Pi cluster. If you can log in and go to the browser, go to here. I have some prepared the, all the documents in here. And I have some also some files for you to access um, uh, so she, can you increase a bit the uh, the font of the or like zoom in the page so okay uh, yeah thank you okay thank you um so the we prepared the cluster operation this is tell you how to operate this cluster and this also some uh, files help you, help you to install the Raspberry Pi cluster and 3D root sc scanner operation. This include all our code uh, for make this scanner running. That's including the capture images and control the motors. I'm going to show you in here, uh, it's our 3D root scanner. And if you can, access to your Raspberry Pi. I'm going to show you like this. If you are able to install not only using the, uh, in here not using the PuTTY, I'm also suggest you using VNC Viewer that will be easier because our Raspberry Pi was installed VNC server. So with that, we can access to the Raspberry Pi directly using any computer as long as connect to the internet. For building this 3D uh, root scanner, we are going to need 10 Raspberry Pis. And because each Raspberry Pi need to control one camera, the camera was high resolution, so then we are occupy very big wide uh, bandwidth. So also we need some micro SD card for the Raspberry storage and 10 USB cable and some Raspberry Pi case and some one uh, desktop switch and some Ethernet cables in here. We try to tell you in here it is how to connect each Raspberry Pi and how to build this cluster. First, if you have WinCVR we are going to access the Raspberry Pi. And also, if your Raspberry Pi was connected to the router, we can show you here. I really suggest you to change all the Raspberry Pi, the IP address to the static address. Like here, we already changed that. Like we have the Pi 01 and we changed the IP address to 101 and the second go to 102. We have until the 10, we call that 110. That's the, we call that PI controller. So that will be easier. Later we assign a uh, different uh, address and community between pies. Okay. Now I'm here, if you are going to 
we need to control the pies. We just need to type in the PI IP address inside this local network. That will be PI controller. So we are able to access the PI now through uh, this remote control. In here, um, first you need to control, you need to change like here. You need to change Raspberry Pi's name for each uh, Raspberry Pi class uh, inside the cluster. In here, you can change the name like PI controller, that's or the any name you want for the one who will control all the other Pi's and also working like a master. And uh, also in here, I suggest you open this camera portal, enable, and also enable SSH connection and WNC connection because we are using WNC uh, portal. And also enable I2C that will control the motor. And remote GPIO, this part, we are not using that because we are using wired one. And performance part, if you are able to, you can change the number to 180. Uh, 288 uh, or 64 according to the Raspberry Pi model. We are using the Raspberry Pi model three. So this is the first part. Second part, according to this instruction, you are go uh, going to install the uh, connection uh, between different Raspberry Pis and also make them parallel working in this uh, Raspberry Pi. You don't, I think, you don't need to know uh, which details you are going to use, but we prepared in here, we prepared these files. You can just uh, ask it, ask it into the Raspberry Pi, like in here. If you download the files, you just exit in here like the name of the files. Then this all the uh, install process will be finished. After you uh, finish this installation, you are going to test whether each pi can connect with each other or not. And this part, I'm also show you how to name each files and the also the most important part between uh, the communication of each Pi. We are going to use the SS key that will help help the each Pi communicate with each other without any password login using direct SS H connection. In here, it's going to show you details all in here. The first time you set up this, you will generate uh, the uh, generate the SH keys. Then, with each SH keys generated in each Pi, we are going to copy copy the SH keys to other Pi's in order in order to let other Pi's recognize these uh, Pi's. I'm going to show you the in installation part. Okay, we in here, we are going to build, uh, copy all the generated SS keys to the PI controller. That's the uh, first uh, PI and or function like master. And in here, we are moving to the PI01. If you want to move into the PI01, it is, we can exit this using WNC. This is our first pie. In here, it promotes you. This is the 
a user of Pi username and password, it's default as a Raspberry. Okay, in here you can access the Pi01. Okay, in here you access Pi01, then you copy all the generate SH keys to the Pi1 besides beside itself, only like a second and to the nine. In here, this is all the process. This will be very long and tedious process. And you, in order to let you uh, run that smoothly, we build this SH files that you exit in one command line. Okay, after that uh, installation, Now each Pi was able to build, uh, communicate with each other and with controller Pi will control all the other Pi's. We are able to ex uh, execute the script among different Pi's and synchronize them. This is the goal of building the cluster. Here I'm going to show you the, let's go back to the Pi. In here, we have the code stored at uh, this pass. This is all our code. It's the same like the repertory, repertory we have shown you before. I'm going to show you how the scanner works. Uh, first, we are going to use the cluster connection .py. This is a Python script to test whether all the cluster was connected to the router or connected each other. You type in the Python and this uh, script name, you can see that all the Raspberry Pi at the, this IP address was connected. So, okay. Second, uh, next step, I'm going to move my camera to inside of the scanner that you see the scanner, how is scanner running. Now inside the scanner now, this is our um, control box in here. You can see that, that all the Raspberry Pi's was uh, inside the box. They are connected to the uh, motors and this motor will control this mechanical arm. And this mechanical arm was mounted by a uh, 10 industrial cameras and all the red cameras was connected to the pipe and this if we put the real route in there we're going to do some test okay in here uh, here you can type in Python camera cluster dot py. This script will help will execute the image catch capture process. This will use all the uh, cluster we have built. This process will last for uh, about six or five minutes for capture all the image images of this route in um, in different angles. With right now we set set up the step as one degree, and with ten images, now we capture around three hundred sixty degrees. So that's around three thousand images. That will help us 
build a very detailed, very high resolution image uh, of the root 3D root model. With the image captured, we are able to upload all the images directly to the server's storage. If you have a server's account, this part, uh, White's going to show you the details. And if you have all your own images captured, we are able to test it too. So in the future, we are able to, we are welcome all the testers, or uh, if you are interested in using our platform, you can use this platform uh, to upload your own images, we are able to try to build 3D models and help you to mirror the route. That is the whole process. In here, I turn off the LED light because this camera was too uh, bright. You can see that all the 10 cameras was moving one degree at the specific time. There are some reasons uh, why we built the cameras uh, like mounting in an arc, because we are trying to keep the cameras in with the same distance of the object. That will be useful and easier to, to detect the same features of the image of the object, then get better uh, result of the 3D model. And also why we are not building the uh, the device like the moving the root, because when roots are moving, it's going to be shaky and has some blurry. It will affect the root 3D models very, very seriously. And there are some important factors in building this 3D root scanner, the lightning and the environment, and also the, the alignment of cameras, they are all op need to be optimized since we only interested, for example, interested in the occlusion part of the route. So we are going to align the images, align the cameras more closer in that part. But we still need to follow some basic sampling theory, like we need to uh, keep enough num number of images, keep enough number of cameras around this root object. Okay, this is the root scanner was running. Now I'm going to switch back to the camera. Yeah, that's very great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for, for doing uh, all these uh, kind of changes to make us easier, to make, to make it easier to understand. That's awesome. Thank you. OK, thank you. This uh, also a uh, next step. I'm going to show you the after all the Raspberry Pi camera and the 3D scanner capture all the images we are able to build a 3D model using this GitHub. In, it's called the 3D model re reconstruction demo. In here, we have we need you set up the Docker containers. In this part, you can reference the document from Docker and install in your 
system, its Linux windows are all up, uh, both are fine. And now we are going to show you how to run this container by building uh, it locally or directly pull up from online uh, Docker Hub. So you don't need to build your locally too. Uh, here. First, we need to clone this repository to a local uh, path. In here, Ooh, I already have that. C model reconstruction demo part. So I just ex entering to that. And now we follow the second step. If we want Build the Docker uh, Docker's locally. We can copy this command directly to the command line. In here, because we have the Docker files defined in here, this all the files was defined how to install the whole software, including the running environment. The Docker container function like a wrapped uh, environment process to our specific software that. So the other users, you don't need to install many, many uh, libraries, many environment, and configure that, causing so long time. So this rep uh, files will help you uh, build that. We can do this. Then this will build your local dockers. This will take uh, some time, so I can already have the dockers. So I'm going to show you that. And here I have built the 3 model reconstruction Docker, and also we I pull out the Docker's from computational plan science. This Docker hub, you can do that uh, later as Wes we are going to show you. And next step is to locate where is your images stored on your local files. If you want later use our website, it is much more easier. What you need to do was just upload your images to our Plan IT uh, platform. In here, I'm going to show you the using locally how to do that. In here, I'm going to copy this. Here. It, we will use the Docker run this uh, pre-built Docker container software that's including all our software and the platform. What you need to change was the path to your image folder in here. And this, after this part, it is default in our uh, environment. So you don't need to worry about that. Here, I'm going to show you where my local sample images stored in here. These are the images captured from scanner, and we only select 64 of them for sh showing that it's not going to take so long. OK. In here, I suggest use the four, uh, four pass. Okay. Then we run this Docker file. Now we are inside the Docker file. And inside the Docker, once inside Docker, what you need to type in command was only the using Execute the pipeline. Okay, it's so our software will start the process of building the 3D model from all the images, and the process we are taking mm, for six five minutes for this small data set. We are, we are going to extract the features. Uh, and using feature matching to find out the features on the images and also the root object which part was belong to the same point then 
calculate the, all the points in the coordinates in 3D space, then we generate a model. It's called a point cloud model with all the 3D points generated by this process. This will taking some time. And if you are not familiar with the Docker containers, I think you don't need to worry. Later, Wes going to show you uh, the plant IT plant, uh, platform, which will you don't need uh, build any Docker's. You don't need to install anything. What you need was prepare your data set and upload to the folder. And you might also need a server's account. Then just upload all the things to the website. Then we will build the models and you can get direct result from them. The next part I'm going to show you while well, this process running, I'm going to show you was the, once the model was built, we are able to extract the individual root trees and also extract the uh, structure of the root. This process can also be executed in a Docker container or Singularity container. But uh, today for visualization uh, purpose, I'm going to run that locally that you see the uh, how the individual roots was tracked and how the all the 18 trees was uh, computed through this process. This process doesn't need you to input any parameters or some setup. It is all automatically uh, built. It is same with the building 3D model of the roots. You don't need set up any content, uh, any parameters. Well, it is still running. I want also show you that we have also built a uh, Raspberry Pi uh, for the growth chamber. We call that smart plant growth. We input some uh, images, top images of the plant, then using Raspberry Pi capture the images and using then analyze all the pa uh, parameters or trees from this top view of the images. Uh, in here, it is in a, I will prepare, show you that. This is I'm so shame, one of, uh, yeah. Sorry, there is a question. OK. Uh, uh, maybe you should do one of the machines, because there is the ego of me. It kills me. Uh, so one of your computer uh, has the microphone on, and that is the echo of me, I guess. Oh, okay, okay. I will try to move it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will. I will read the question just in the meantime. Okay. Uh, hello. Sorry, I was not here since the beginning. When you were talking about leaf temperature. Was it about the color temperature or temperature in Celsius? Oh, okay, this is very good. Uh, this is, uh, we are talking about the temperature in Celsius and okay. the deep surface temperature. We are able to measure that from the color distribution. That is, we are using the temperature marker. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, I can continue with this process. Okay, so time passed quickly. This result will come out. Uh, uh, with all the images, the features matching part, we also need to uh, uh, calculate the point cloud from the sparse model to dense model and try to get more details from these images. But uh, right now we have some uh, experience with building 3D root models. We, as we know, we have some number of images required request for specific 
resolution of 3D models. And we also uh, understand if you want really detailed 3D models, we need uh, more images captures, we need uh, more detailed reconstruction time. And later I'm going to show you some very fine structure of the same model we are just built. And you will see the difference uh, with details. But if the breeders or plant scientists just won't know the basic structures like the number of walls and the bridge root angles in this uh, not so heavily occluded, then we are able to detect that very quickly. Okay, the process was finished, so I can exit this container. In here, you will get a result like this dense uh, zero point PLY files. This is the 3D models we just built from this uh, process. It takes around five minutes. Now we are going to uh, put this model in the, uh, we call that change the name. So we are going to extract the traits from that. Since it's built by 64 images, so we're going to call that root 64. Okay. Okay, now can, if you are able to, we can switch to the another repertory. It's called 3D model trace demo. In this, this repertory, it's the same process. You need to clone all the code to your local uh, machine and exit uh, the files in here. And we, I have that locally download. And for today's purpose, I prepare some demo pipeline and we are going to show you how to uh, use this soft, uh, software to extract traits. And also for visualization purpose, I'm going to show you some visualization result. For normal running, we put it this software in a cluster this is headless cluster. We don't need to uh, see any result, uh, any visualization. We only need to get the Excel files as a result. Okay, in here. Then we need to know the Also for your uh, notes, I have created some online uh, document which will share with you all the command I have used today. So if you can look back in here, you can copy this command directly to the files. Here we are execute the demo pipeline and this dash P was tell the uh, files where the files exist, the path. And dash M means the model name. In here we already changed that to root 64. Okay, in here, the whole process including many uh, steps. First step, we are going to scan all the rules from top to the bottom and we are using the algorithm called level scan. And we try to find out also uh, the connection between different uh, scans and then using tracking algorithm to track individual root trace. With individual root trace, we are also able to detect which roots was the bridge root and their uh, individual root lens angle. Since in 3D space, we got every coordinate information. So this process will be uh, generate an Excel files, generate all the uh, root traits in one file. And here you can see the process, the computer was doing connection part because so many part was missing. Okay, the visualization result will be ready. Okay, in here, we can see the built uh, 3D root models from this uh, 
uh, 3D uh, root structure from these 3D models. In here, you can see some details. In, you can see the connect part. And also this part, I'm going to use a wireframe representation style because it's connected. It's not, uh, it's some uh, part we need process. In the next part, I'm going to show you the, the live tracking of individual routes. Uh, sorry, Sushink, there is another question for you. Okay. Um, when you phenotype the root system, it looks like a non-destructive method. Is there a risk to dry the plants? Uh, let me see now. Can you uh, post the, the questions in the chat? Yes, sorry. Uh, here it's on the screen okay. again. Let's try the plants. Oh yes, um, I understand now. This is uh, when we dig out the roots from the field, we go quickly, go quickly. Then before it's drying, we wash that, and we have some robot built for the RPE project, and they will wash the roots on site. And once it's washed clean, we directly feed the roots into our 3D scanner. This will avoid the drying and change, make the root structure change. But it's a very good point. We noticed that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. This is the process of in track individual roots. Okay. In here, it, we can identify individual roots and their angles, everything in here. Okay. And we are writing out the files called root trace measurement in the folder. It is in the cross session folder. It's analyzed the result. In here, you will see the saved animation. In here, you will see all the roots uh, trace was written out as uh, Excel files with values. The unit is uh, still in an uh, image pixel, but we can easily transfer to the physical uh, world coordinates. Okay. Okay. This is the two main part I wa want to show you about our dirt 3D system. And for the last small part, I'm going to show you the plant image processing, we call that smart plant growth software. In here, you are going to show you this container. It's called SPG, smart plant growth top down trees. We have built some pipeline for 2D plant images using Raspberry Pi. Uh, our pipeline was able to extract normal uh, basic trees, also color distribution. I'm going to show you how to run that. First step, you still need to clone our GitHub into local files. And this container, it is also containerized. Later, Wes will going to show you how to use that on our platform. And I have the prepared the Command in here, you can directly copy that, try to run that. Since we have the different image format, like JPEG or PNG, first we are going to execute this image, try to analyze uh, this rice image to see the result. This process might take seven, uh, seven seconds. Yeah, okay. So the results will write out in the Excel files, like the leaf area, everything, temperature, curvature. And in this folder, you are going to show all the image result if you want. We have the color distribution that detect how many kind of green color on the surface of the right object. And also their distribution, like the first kind of green distributed in the rice was like this, second was like this, and with all the kind of color distribution. And with the 
uh, individual leaf segmentation, we are able to detect individual leaves and count their numbers. This is also, we can detect some uh, structure or graph from this leaf. And also we are able to detect the maximum width or dimension of the limb from top view. And in here, there's a segmentation of individual leaf. This is the skeleton of the leaf. Okay, I'm going to sh also process the another two images together since our algorithm was parallels, so you can run that uh, in parallel way and also get the result simultaneously. In here, for example, this is the result of first uh, images. You can detect the similar result in here, color distribution and temperature. And we can continue running to the same Excel files. So this is uh, our software pipeline. OK, I think uh, I'm going to hand the rest part to Wise, which, who will show you our uh, plant ID platform, which will integrate all our algorithm into the website. So you don't need the install many pipeline, just like, as I showed you before. You don't need to install the Docker container. All you need to do was upload your images. OK, thank you. OK, thanks. Uh, can everyone hear me? Not going to get any feedback from that. Yes, yes. OK, can great. <laughs> um, all right, let me see if I can share my screen here. OK. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, our online um, web-based uh, phenotyping automation platform now. Um, thanks, Sushing, for covering all of the Raspberry Pi and um, hardware stuff. Um, so the idea uh, behind this platform um, is to make it easier for, for end users, whether they be plant biologists or breeders or software developers or um, anybody really, um, make it easier to run the software uh, without needing to, um, to worry about installation, about dependencies, um, about uh, learning to program, about juggling uh, submission scripts on a cluster or something like that. Um, the idea is really to, to create a tool that someone can use from the browser uh, to, to run this software on clusters or supercomputers um, with a click. Um, it's, it's a website that's integrated tightly with both Cybers um, and GitHub, as well as Docker. Um, data lives with Cybers in the Cybers data store. Um, Code lives on GitHub, and uh, and workflow developers can integrate pretty much any project or computational pipeline um, as long as it will run in a Docker or a Singularity container. It can be integrated. Um, so that's that's the the main idea behind behind the platform. Um, so again. Um, you know, we have all this phenotyping software. Um, some of it's been around for years, maybe even decades. Um, but much of it is uh, operating system specific or um, might have complex uh, dependencies or, you know, maybe collecting dust on, on someone's hard drive somewhere. Um, so the idea is for Plant IT to be browser-based middleware it kind of acts as glue uh, between cyber infrastructure and, and cloud services and, uh, and the software, the phenotyping software that we'd like to run on those computing resources. Um, 
So a, a very quick overview of, of the way it works. Um, it's a website, uh, above all. Um, so on the right-hand side, you have your end user over here. Um, the website is just composed from a Postgres database, um, a Django web application, and some Docker containers. Uh, it will automatically plug into um, any data that you've uploaded to the Cyverse data store. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough on how to do that in a second. Um, and it will also plug into uh, public clusters, supercomputers, um, institutional computing resources like that, whether they be grid or cloud. Um, and as I said before, um, it's integrated tightly with GitHub, a little bit like Travis CI, if you're familiar with continuous integration tools. Um, and so the way that you, you integrate a project is just to add a plantit.yaml file to your repository with a few required attributes and then some optional ones. Um, and it's as simple as that uh, to get a workflow deployed on the website. So I'm going to do a couple quick demos um, just to walk through how to use this and how, how it can hopefully make, make some use cases easier. Um, so let's see. So here's the website. Um, again, it's called Plant IT. Uh, it's at portnoy.cyverse.org right here, if anyone's following along and wants to check it out. Um, you will need a Cyverse account to log in, um, as well as a GitHub account. So I'm going to go to my other browser here to show how to log in. You can just click this Login with Cyverse button. It will take you to this page. You might need to create an account if you don't already have one, or you can just put your information in here. After your initial login, um, you should see this Login to GitHub button up here. Um, what this will do is it will link your GitHub account to the Plant IT application. Um, after which, when you log in, you should see a page like this, where it will pull some of your information from GitHub. It'll pull some other information from Cyverse, and uh, then drop you on this user page right here. So, um, so the first demo I wanted to go through really quickly is uh, is how to run the smart plant growth top down uh, parameter free algorithm um, for geometric traits that Sushing was just describing. Um, that's this repository here on GitHub SPG top down traits. Um, as Sushing said, all of these can be run on the command line. The easiest way to do it is Docker. Um, but for people who may not have command line experience or might just be looking for an easier way to run these things, um, the web platform is intended to be to be that way. So again, so this is the smart plant growth um, workflow. So on the Plant.it website, you, you have a couple of resources over here. Um, a user registry, I'm not really interested in that. Um, the two important ones are workflows and clusters. So we're going to go to workflows. We have a number of them installed, um, but this is the one I'm going to demo right now. Smart plant growth, top-down traits from images. I'm going to click on it. <clears throat> And uh, all this information, as I said, is just pulled directly from GitHub um, by virtue of this plantit.yaml file right here. The website will automatically detect it and, uh, and integrate any repository that, that has a file named plantit.yaml. Um, so the first thing we need is we need some data in the Cyverse data store. Um, in order to do this. So I'm going to switch over to the discovery environment. Um, I'm sure some people are already familiar with Cyverse, but if not, um, to create an account, you can go to cyverse.org and choose sign up here. Otherwise, you're just going to want to choose login. Um, OK. 
Okay, so I'm in the discovery environment. I'm going to log in. And then go over here on the left side to the data tab. Um, and we can do, we can work with the same files that uh, Sushing just did a demo with. So that's uh, that's two Arabidopsis seedlings, it looks like, and um, and then three rice rice plants. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new folder in the discovery environment on the Cyverse website. I'm going to call it Phenome Force SPG for smart plant growth. Open it up. Um, I'm going to go over here, choose Upload, Browse Local. Find these three files, and these should only take a second to upload. OK, um, so that's done. Uh, so now I can come back here, uh, back to Plant IT. Um, so from the workflow submission page, uh, it's going to prompt us for a couple different things. Um, we can attach some tags, just some informative um, information about what what this workflow run is. Um, so I'm going to call it Phenome Force uh, SPG test. Um, tags aren't necessary; they're just kind of helpful if you want an easy way to keep track of which workflow is which. So I'm going to go back in here. Um, under input directory, uh, this will allow us to choose a directory from the Cyverse data store. Um, any directory under our home path right here. So you can see all of these are the same. Um, here's the one we just created, Phenome Force SPG. I'm going to click it. And uh, so now we need to, to choose a cluster to submit this to. Um, Sapelo 2 is the University of Georgia's institutional cluster, but that's that's a private one um, that not everybody has access to. Um, so the public clusters that we have available right now, the only one we have is Stampede 2, um, which is the the flagship Exceed supercomputer um, at the University of Texas. Um, this one is going to prompt us for a password, a username and password. Um, if you already have an Exceed account, then you should be able to go ahead and use this already, um, just like I'm about to do. So we're ready to submit at this point. Um, I'm going to hit Start, put in my username um, and password, and then hit OK. And uh, so, as you can see, it's going to just uh, deploy this workflow to Stampede 2 um, and give us periodic updates on how it's going. So this is probably going to take five minutes or so to run. Um, while it runs, I'd like to talk briefly about um, just walk through the process necessary to publish, uh, publish a new workflow to Plant IT. Um, so as mentioned before, the only thing necessary to get it to get a workflow on the website is just to add a plantit.yaml file to your GitHub repository. Um, so I've created a demonstration repository here called uh, Find UFOs. Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist in this context. Um, UFO, I'm using that to mean unidentified fruit objects. And uh, I thought that was appropriate because um, we can just feed it an image of these tomatoes here. And uh, hopefully, what we'd like it to do is uh, identify the contours of each tomato, the internal area, um, just do a simple segmentation and contour detection. 
So I'll walk through um, what's, whoops, can't type. So now I'll just walk through the steps necessary to, uh, to integrate a workflow with Plant IT. Um, this is our documentation site. You can get there from the Plant IT splash page. Just go to docs right here, and then scroll down to defining workflows. Um, at its simplest, this plantit.yaml file, um, it just needs six attributes, uh, just the workflow name, the workflow author, whether or not it should be made public to other users, um, whether or not to clone the GitHub repository prior to running the workflow, um, which Docker image to run the workflow within, and then uh, the commands, the entry point to the workflow. Um, as I said before, any Docker image will work. Um, as long as your code runs in Docker or Singularity, Plant IT should be able to run it. Um, so you can use any software stack you like. Um, so in this case, I've already created this repository. Um, I'm going to open up the Plant IT file for it. So again, here's the name. Here is the author. That's not my actual name. But um, currently, I have this set to private. Um, I will demonstrate right now how to publish it. Um, it references this Docker image called wbenelli slash find UFOs, which you can find on Docker Hub. Oops, I thought I was signed in, but it's going to make me sign in again. Yep, this is a public image. So if you go to Docker Hub, you should be able to find it and pull it yourself um, like this. OK, and uh, so here's the command that we're using to run this workflow. We're just saying Python 3. Uh, run this script find.py ufos input. Um, so this input here, this references uh, whichever input file we choose in the plant IT web interface uh, to plug into this workflow. Um, so as we did before with smart plant growth, Demonstrate. Oh, OK, that was quick. Smart plant growth finished already. Um, so anyways, when, uh, when you select an input file from the web interface here, for example, uh, this is just an image of some tomatoes that I also have locally. That's what that looks like. Um, so when you select this image, 19s, et cetera, that will then uh, be substituted when this command runs uh, for the input environment variable right here. Um, OK, and the rest of the attributes. Logo, logo is optional, not that important. Um, all that allows Plant IT to do is uh, is display an image um, for for the workflow right here in the UI. Um, OK, the next sections are important, though. Resources is how we can instruct Plant IT um, to request resources from, from cluster schedulers. For example, uh, PBS, Slurm, Mob, all those. Um, so what this says is, um, at maximum, this workflow should take 10 minutes of wall time. Uh, we want it to request 5 gigs of memory, um, and it only needs one process and one core. Uh, the other two sections are input. Um, again, this workflow takes one input file. 
And here we're specifying that that file can be either a JPEG or a PNG file. And down here, we are specifying that this workflow, uh, it's going to produce some output files, but we're really only concerned with the ones that end uh, the, the PNG image output files. Anything that matches this PNG pattern um, will be detected by Plant IT after the workflow finishes. Um, so this is what the, uh, the configuration file looks like in full. I'm going to save this. Uh, the only change I made, I think, is just changing this public from false to true. Um, go ahead and push this so that we can see how to make a workflow public. Um, But as I mentioned, um, if you have a private workflow that you have not yet made public, it will show up here on your user profile page down under workflows. Um, for instance, this one is right here. And uh, we can run this one just like we can uh, smart plant growth. So I'm going to call this find UFOs test. going to select an input file. And we can also run this one on Stampede 2. It's going to prompt me again for username and password. And there we go. We've started it. OK, so while this runs, um, we can look at the outputs from the, uh, the top-down smart plant growth traits. So uh, oh, I should mention this. Um, to, to view uh, your running workflows or completed workflows at any point, uh, just click on the logo up here in the top left. It will pull out the sidebar. Um, running workflows are up on top. Completed ones are down here. So um, you can see that we created this 10 minutes ago, finished about five minutes ago, um, and we got 55 result files from it. They're all listed down here. Um, we can either download them all as a zip file or individually. Um, over here, I'm going to switch to grid view so we can see some previews of the results. Um, so again, these, these look exactly like what Su Xing uh, showed about 15 minutes ago. Um, for instance, the, uh, the segmentation of the rice image. Uh, let's see some other ones. Skeletonization of the Arabidopsis rosette. Um, and here's a good one showing uh, showing leaf identification on the Arabidopsis rosette. And um, like I said, um, these can be downloaded all together in a zip file. Just click download right here. Might take a second if the file is kind of large. Um, but so here are our results. OK, um, so the, uh, the demo workflow is still running. Um, so I just wanted to show that, uh, show that we can also view results from, um, from a 3D root reconstruction, like Su Xing was demonstrating on Plant IT as well. This one takes a little bit longer to run, um, just due to the, the algorithmic complexity involved. Um, so I didn't run it live, but I ran this one earlier this morning. Um, and uh, so if you come down here and go to carousel view instead of grid, um, and then flip over to the .ply file, you can get a, a preview of, uh, 
of the 3D model produced from, from the reconstruction algorithm. Um, this is a sparse one. This one is nowhere near as dense as the one that Su Xing demonstrated. Um, but you can still clearly see um, the root structure and shape here. And I believe I just got a notification for the completion of the demo workflow. Yes, OK. All right, so back to find UFOs. <laughs> um, this is going to take just a second to load. Okay, I'm going to select grid view again. Um, and here are results like we wanted. Um, I'll download this just so we can get a closer view of it. Yeah, so this workflow just gave us a pretty basic contour detection with this image, um, and we've identified and labeled each of the, the sliced tomatoes here. Um, I suppose I, I should have showed what the actual code behind this workflow looks like. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, really, there's only three dependencies. We're just using NumPy, um, OpenCV, and, uh, and Click, which is a Python library to make CLIs. Um, so really, we're just doing three steps here, um, a, uh, an OTSU threshold, um, a, a dilation and closing to get smoother contours, and then a contour detection down here. Um, so uh, that's the, uh, the quick demo on how to use plant IT. Um, I'm going to flip back to my slides now. Um, so this, this platform has been under development for about a year now. Um, but we're getting to the point where we'd really like some beta testers, some initial users, to start giving us some feedback, um, helping us test it out, stabilize it a little bit. Um, but we're at the point where, where we're ready to go public and, and try to get some feedback with it. So uh, if anybody's interested, um, please get in touch. Um, contact me or anyone else from the lab. It would be really, really helpful on our end uh, to get some early users. Um, but, but as far as features we already have, um, viewing and downloading files, um, direct access to, to data stored in Cyber's data store, um, easy integration with GitHub. You can share data sets with other users. Um, you can schedule periodic workflows as well as, as, well as one-off ones. Um, and as we saw, you can get email notifications on completion so you don't have to get keep refreshing the page or anything like that. Um, later on, we have a couple features um, that I'm pretty excited about that I think will uh, will make some, some potential users pretty happy. Um, one of them is image annotation, um, specifically in the context of, of machine learning workflows. Um, say you, know, you have a neural network that identifies some features of an image, um, say veins, veins uh, from leaf images or something like that. Um, but it needs retraining um, or, or manual annotation um, to update and retrain the model. Um, that's a use case that we'd like to support and that I'm interested in uh, in trying to trying to get finished this summer. Um, we'll also be integrating um, MIAPI metadata support. If anyone is familiar with MIAPI, it stands for um, Minimum Information About a Plant Phenotyping Experiment. Um, we also have plans to uh, to allow users to plug in data in Amazon S3, Google Cloud Platform, Microsoft Azure, 
uh, as well as Cyverse. Um, and at some point, I'd really like to get something approximating um, streaming or near real time pseudo batch processing, um, something for use cases where data are constantly coming in from a data source um, rather than traditional batch oriented processing. Um, and that concludes uh, the plant IT section. Um, so I'm going to flip back here. Awesome. Can you? Yeah, man, that's great. <laughs> you did a really great job and also hear about your your next, um, you know, aims for the project. That's amazing because exactly we plant scientists, we need this. We need something that is, is right there directly and we can uh, have our results fast and make decisions. So thank you. Thank you a lot for doing that and also everything open source. Uh, you guys are are doing great. Thank you. Anna, are you there? Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I guess like Sushin wants to do another short demo before concluding. Um, so Sushin, do you want to do it? Uh, OK. OK. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks guys for presenting the amazing platform. I hope everyone can really enjoy that and become a tester. And we are welcomed for feedback and improvement. I just want to show you a small part. Uh, just now I mentioned about Dirt 3D. Uh, uh, you still see my screen now? OK. Dirt 3D system, uh, there are big questions coming with the resolution. If we are able to get the higher resolution, our software was able to extract more detailed traits. In here, I'm going to show you using the software called Cloud, Cloud Compiler. Yeah, this one. We load in the same root models we just built and with 64 images and 3600 images. We will see the difference between them. Since they are built from the same system, they are aligned. So we need to move out one of them using the translate tools in here. Okay. In here, you might see the difference. With 64 images, we can get the basic structure, but not so much with the occlusion part. But with the more images, we are able to even build the fine roots on the tip part, and you can see the occlusion part inside this. This is all has details. So that proves the power of the 3D reconstruction and the third 3D. We are able to extend and build more detailed root structures and my more 3D root trees help plan science to identify more genotypes through the details capture. OK, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Sushin. Uh, it was a great demonstration. Um, yeah, so. Um, I do have some questions. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. OK, so uh, if you are there watching right now, you can start to type your questions in the, in the comments. And then we're going to pass here for the speakers. Also, uh, the links that uh, the speakers were talking during the workshop is, is here in the description. And also, they are, they, I know that they are really nice people and they are they're going to answer any question that you contact them and uh, making questions in their GitHub. So the first question that actually is about uh, the platform that go taking pictures, right? Did you guys try to use a video? instead pictures to make the phenotyping process? Mm. I mean, like uh, record a video and start a video? Taking... OK, OK. Yeah. Uh, we tried the videos, and we encountered the same problem when we are rotating the route. Since the video captured with uh, uh, real time, the images was uh, has some blurry. So this blurry will affecting 
the 3D ring construction part very, very seriously. And uh, we are not able to do that. So we switch to the, let the camera move step, uh, one step and pause and get images. That will be give us guarantee. We get clear and the images of the different real part of the rules. Thank you. Yeah, I, I also have a question about the Fenty Vixa that which was which is very cool. So my question is that did you use it also for other, let's say also to have 3D images of a plant or let's say can you so okay, you, you use this system that you extract the plant and then you take the image of the of the roots. Uh, but do you think that setups can also be used for other systems? You know, sometimes roots are grown in rhizotron to see if, like, you know, a transparent pot. So, so do you think um, you can do something similar also for other plant setups? Let's say I want the 3D images of a plant or, or I guess the plant it cannot be so big. Let's say if I'm working with rice, I cannot wait that. Uh, after the flowering or maybe even before, but like, do you think the setup, something similar can also be used uh, for other plant system or other plant tissue? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, after we build up this device and we showed our colleagues and some students, the other lab was very interested. They bring in different kind of plants, <laughs> some tomatoes, cassavas, bean roots, uh, we are trying to customize their needs, build the similar root models using our 3D scanner. And re later we realized this device, maybe it's big for bigger roots. We can build some smaller port portable ones, uh, like the same function. And now our ability was extended to only capture part of the images of the object you want to scan. So we are able to build models from that. And we tried with the bean root, cassava, the root models. It is looks okay for us. We are able to deal with, uh, with that. And with some other plants, I think we still are trying and it's very, very possible. We are also get some treats from that. So it's and a flexible platform then. It's like yes, it yeah. Adapted. That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the clustering method that you guys using is like uh, k-means or the one that you choose how many colors you're gonna patterns that you're gonna have. For example, I choose five, so they're gonna classify my cluster in five groups, right? Yes. It's like is is it, like that. Yes. Yes. And um, for that part, I think. Um, we want to detect the color distribution among the leaves. If the users want more than five, you can define that parameters. You want 10, but uh, in, in our experience, we see there's no big difference between the category nine or category 10. So we use five as a default parameter. This parameter can be changed. And the MISER we use for classing this was using the k-means, but we are using the k-means with uh, optimized numbers where we don't need to define any numbers for that. And in general, our algorithm was all parameter free. So we don't need to define region of interest to second plan. No, we don't need to define threshold, how to uh, work in RGB or HSV space, what's value we need to, to segment the plan. No. And in 3D space, re reconstruction, do you, uh, we don't need to define any parameters for the images. All our algorithm will detect and only leave the users uh, like the one click function that will be very convenient for all the plant scientists. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so basically uh, the the platform that Wes was, uh, was, was showing was the interface of uh, Sushin was uh, presenting, right? So Sushin presenting in, in code line, and then we're showing how to use these in a, you know, uh, 
friendly use interface <laughs> on uh, okay that's great Anna? yeah so yeah i have a question two questions actually um uh, the first one is like okay um so the the pipeline that swishing showed was like building 3d images of routes from the scanner right um, but if I want, can I use the same pipeline for other phenotypic setups? Let's say I get time series images of plants growing, uh, and I have still Raspberry Pi setups like in a different, in a grand grow chamber or anything. Can I use the same pipeline um, to do my 3D images? Uh, yeah, I think that's good to know because you know um, maybe out there there are many people working on different setups, but the challenging part is really the coding. And so if they can use your pipeline for doing that, that, that would be great. Uh, yeah. And uh, the second question is from Wes. Like I saw that uh, the pipeline for the couture of the tomatoes. So, um, well, because I work with seed size, so I think I, I was very interested. So do you, uh, so which kind of trait you can get from from that images? Can you measure, let's say, how big the area, the length, the width? Uh, can you do that? Certainly, yeah. Um, the uh, the workflow I showed was um, very basic. Again, it was just a, a pretty simple segmentation and um, contour detection with OpenCV. Um, but really, in any kind of uh, image trait extraction um, could be could be done. Um, Su Xing is much more an expert in that than I am. <laughs> uh, yes, thanks for the questions. I think General Philip points out a very important uh, part. The our platform, Plant IT, was a, a, a big platform. It is uh, it already integrate our current algorithm, but it has ability to integrate some other people's module. If you have your mo own module or own code, you want attach to this platform, it is easy to do that. Wise give you a live example how to do that. And for second part, I want to answer the Anna Rita's qu uh, questions. If you want to try building the models using your own data set or your own setup, it is also possible. We are right now the 3D uh, system. We write a manuscript is already in the preview and it's called Dirt 3D. And for that part, we will write some instructions how to take your own images and give you some basic instruction. In fact, it is not complex. You can hold one camera or hold your cell phone, walk around the object, get 20 images for us, we will try. We are not able to guarantee it's going to be the model very uh, comp uh, dense or beautiful, but we can try. I think the setup will be easy and this will benefit for all the other uh, plant scientists, which are located in different places. You don't need to bring all the rules to our scanner. <laughs> that's all, thank you. That's great. Ah, yeah, so that's very yeah. good to know. Um, so thank you for showing this great uh, platform. I think it's gonna be very useful for the people working um, with that. I do have one, uh, one last question, I guess. Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, Wesley, uh, I can put my script to run online, and then I can turn off my computer and wait for receiving emails and oh, your analysis is done. Yes, exactly. Yep, okay. you can get, you can just upload, submit, um, and then get an email notification when it's done. Yep, that's awesome. <laughs> it's meant to be as easy as possible. That's great. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, do you have other question, Anna? No, I think I'm fine. Um, okay, I guess it's very useful because for us that we are plant scientists and we are learning how to do, uh, to apply informatic tools for our analysis, having something that is very easy uh, can help us. It's, it's a great, it's of great help. So yeah, thank awesome. you guys for developing this platform and for presenting it, it here. Uh, and yeah, I think we, um, we, we can thank you. There are no, yeah. so there is like comments say so nice on YouTube. Yeah, awesome. And also, guys, when you finish the other platforms and the mm -hmm. upgrades that you guys are doing right now, let us know. We can make another 
workshop and we can come here and share with our community. It's going to be great. Yeah, where your guys are always welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, um, thanks so much. Yeah, so Philippe, it's time to uh, continue. Another workshop is ended. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, thank you, guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. And um, yeah, time to advertise the next workshop. It was very great today, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. Here we go. So we will the, be the, we are entering the second part of this workshop series. Next Friday, same time, same place. We will have Jennifer and Elizabeth from Montana State to talk still about Raspberry Pi and how we can use them in for phenotyping. So if you already registered for these workshops, you don't need to register again because you are in our mailing list. Uh, but if you think that any of your folks can be interested, please share the link uh, and so that they can register. And with that, we thank you for being here today with us. Yeah, thank you for being here. See you next Friday. Bye, guys. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.